Energy Dynamics Corporation International, EDCI, uses cutting-edge USA energy technologies to convert a variety of carbon feedstocks into valuable energy resources, namely electricity and synthetic liquid fuels. EDCI specifically works to deploy cutting-edge EDCI clean energy solutions. These solutions help solve existing environmental problems. These solutions use cutting-edge USA waste management and energy technologies. They produce valuable energy resources and they provide very cost-effective alternatives to existing waste management practices. These EDCI clean energy solutions use proprietary cutting-edge technologies from American Combustion Technologies, Incorporated. ACTI is a major strategic partner of ours and they produce both the pyrolysis and the gas to liquefaction technologies which are at the heart of EDCI clean energy solutions. The three major steps involved in these solutions are number one, the initial processing of waste and materials resulting in a homogeneous carbon-based feedstock for further processing. Step number two, that feedstock is then taken and goes through a thermal distillation or pyrolysis process that then yields a pressurized producer gas and a small volume of inorganic residue. In the third step, this clean producer gas is then taken to produce electricity by either combusting that gas in some sort of a gas turbine or in a reciprocating engine or in a burner to produce steam and then electricity. Or alternatively, that same producer gas can go through a modified Fischer-Tropsch reaction and be used to create sulfur-free synthetic liquid fuel. It's important to understand that EDCI clean energy solutions are applicable to a broad variety of carbon feedstocks. These include things like municipal solid waste, sewage sludge or animal waste, wood chips, plastic waste, and coal. What you will see in the remainder of this video is a demonstration of the conversion of coal to synthetic liquid fuel, namely synthetic diesel fuel. The two ACTI technologies involved are thermal dilution or pyrolysis followed by gas to liquefaction. The first technology takes two inch minus sized coal, processes it through the pyrolysis unit and converts that to producer gas. This producer gas is a mixture of various gases. The main component being methane and its other related CXHY gases. These thanes will produce these CXHYs will comprise anywhere between 50 and 60 percent of the producer gas. The producer gas also contains about 20 percent hydrogen, maybe 15 percent carbon monoxide or so, and then zero to five percent each of both carbon dioxide and nitrogen. This producer gas then goes through a gas cleanup phase to take out sulfur and other unwanted elements. The second key ACTI technology in the conversion of coal to synthetic liquid fuel takes that producer gas then and through a modified Fischer-Tropsch reaction converts that producer gas first to a clean synthesis gas comprising only carbon monoxide and hydrogen and then through a bubble column slurry reactor it transforms that synthesis gas into synthetic liquid fuel. This process of converting the synthesis gas to the synthetic liquid fuel is enhanced further by a hydrogenation step which increases the output of diesel fuel. In this example which you'll see in the video we are beginning with a high quality coal product which has a BTU per pound of about 13,300. It also has 10% moisture content and about 10% ash content. These technologies, first the thermal dilution and then the gas to liquefaction, will produce approximately 
90 gallons of synthetic diesel per one U.S. ton of coal. Let's now discuss a bit more on the details of ACTI's thermal dilution or pyrolysis system. As you'll see from the diagram, the ACTI pyrolysis system begins with a feedstock bin in which the feedstock bin is introduced to the system. You'll notice here that the feedstock bin has a valve depicted, which is actually two valves and an airlock system, which keeps oxygen and unwanted air out of the combustion chamber. The reason to eliminate air and oxygen from the combustion chamber is that its inclusion in the feedstock will result unnecessarily in the formation of unwanted products, such as dioxins and also CO2. The formation of CO2 by the system is to a large degree restricted by the fact that there is no additional oxygen or air brought in with the feedstock. This is done through a constant vacuum, which then eliminates the oxygen and air from the feedstock before it enters the chamber. Once the feedstock then enters the chamber, you will notice there are two tubular combustion chambers, which through an auger system then move the feedstock down one auger, it drops down to the lower auger, and then back again. During that transit through the auger system, the gasified product vapors are extracted under a constant vacuum, and by the time that the feedstock goes to the end of the second auger, there is nothing remaining in terms of usable volatile gases. There will, however, be a small amount of an ash discharge, in this example about 10%. The next thing to notice in the diagram is the use of a super low NOx burner to indirectly heat the feedstock. It's very important to notice that the flame from this burner does not at any time come into direct contact with the waste stream. It essentially heats an oven externally around the combustion chamber and indirectly heats that feedstock. In California, the emission standards for burners are very strict. And California uses what is called the best available control technology for all emissions. In the instance of low NOx burners, ACTI has repeatedly set the best available control technology standard in California for burners. Indeed, this is one of the big important factors around ACTI pyrolysis technology. The system is designed as a closed loop. This precludes the release of any emissions from the waste stream itself into the atmosphere. The only emissions into the atmosphere come from ACTI's super low NOx burner. And these emissions are well under all California EPA regulations for emissions. Again, the production of CO2 in the system is decreased greatly by the lack of oxygen or air, and whatever CO2 or other emissions are made from the feedstock are kept in a closed loop and processed internally without any emissions into the atmosphere. The diagram also points out an important feature of ACTI's pyrolysis system. You'll notice that the gases which are drawn from the feedstock after they are cleaned, some of them are pressurized into gas compression tanks for later use with an outflow which also supplies the low NOx burners for the system. As such, the system is self-sustaining and that the gases it produces from the feedstock are also used to fuel the low NOx burners which heat the system. Now, let's go to the specific demonstration we'd like to show you today on this video. We are taking very high quality, size reduced coal and using that as our feedstock. The coal is carefully measured and is then introduced, in this example, by hand into the feed hopper. Once the coal is introduced into the hopper, it then enters the pyrolysis unit through a series of two airlocks, which are controlled by guillotine valves. The first guillotine opens, the coal enters the airlock, that guillotine closes, under a vacuum, air and oxygen is removed, 
The second guillotine then opens and introduces the feedstock into the pyrolysis unit. The pyrolysis unit then moves the feedstock through a series of two parallel augers. While the feedstock transit the augers, then the gas is sucked off under a low vacuum and removed from the combustion chamber. In the next step, the hot raw producer gases coming from the pyrolysis unit then go through a series of gas scrubbing steps. In this gas scrubbing process, the hot gases coming from the pyrolysis unit are cooled and also any available volatile oils are condensed as are any other unwanted volatile elements such as for instance volatilized lead or mercury which is removed from the system at this point. This gas scrubbing step utilizes either water or diesel as the liquid to scrub the gas. Part of this gas cleaning phase also includes the use of a venturi to remove particulate matter from the gas. Finally, in a gas scrubbing step to remove sulfur, the gas is then cleaned to result in a nice, clean, low particulate, high BTU producer gas. This producer gas will have a energy value of anywhere between 600 and 1200 BTUs per standard cubic foot. This clean producer gas is then compressed and stored in a compressed gas tank. At this point, the system could do two things with this compressed producer gas. It could use that producer gas and it could combust it in a gas turbine and generate electricity. Alternatively, that producer gas could be burned in a reciprocating internal combustion engine, also to produce electricity. Or alternatively, it could be burned in a low NOx burner and be used to produce steam and run a steam turbine, which would also produce electricity. The other alternative use of the producer gas, which we're going to see today in this video, is the synthesis of liquid fuel through a modified Fischer-Tropsch reaction. The producer gas will go through three specific steps. In the first step, the mixed producer gas is steam reformed in the presence of a catalyst to produce a clean synthesis gas, which is comprised almost entirely of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. In the second step of the ACTI gas to liquefaction process, the carbon monoxide and hydrogen in a particular ratio is recombined in the presence of a catalyst to then form longer chain carbons which create then a synthetic liquid diesel fuel. This second step of the ACTI gas to liquefaction process is enhanced further by the hydrogenation of some of the products from the second step to increase the yield of synthetic diesel fuel. In all, the ACTI gas to liquefaction process then takes the clean producer gas from the first technology, the thermal dilution pyrolysis technology, and then converts it through three steps to sulfur-free, high-quality, synthetic diesel fuel. homogenous carbon-based feedstock for further processing. Step number two, that feedstock is then taken and goes through a thermal distillation or pyrolysis process that then yields a pressurized producer gas and a small volume of inorganic residue. In the third step, this clean producer gas 
is then taken to produce electricity by either combusting that gas in some sort of a gas turbine or in a reciprocating engine or in a burner to produce steam and then electricity. Or alternatively, that same producer gas can go through a modified Fischer-Tropsch reaction and be used to create sulfur-free synthetic liquid fuel. It's important to understand that EDC Technologies Incorporated. ACTI is a major strategic partner of ours and they produce both the pyrolysis and the gas to liquefaction technologies which are at the heart of EDCI clean energy solutions. The three major steps involved in these solutions are number one, the initial processing of waste and materials resulting in a homo energy solutions. These solutions help solve existing environmental problems. These solutions use cutting edge USA waste management and energy technologies. They produce valuable energy resources and they provide very cost effective alternatives to existing waste management practices. These EDCI clean energy solutions use proprietary cutting edge technologies from American Combustion Energy Dynamics Corporation International EDCI uses cutting edge USA energy technologies to convert a variety of carbon feedstocks into valuable energy resources, namely electricity and synthetic liquid fuels. EDCI specifically works to deploy cutting edge EDCI clean energy.